Welcome to the kitchen, making chilaquiles. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I've made chilaquiles on video many times, but this is a different approach. Instead of giving you just a recipe to follow, I'm gonna give you the master recipe. And this one is written in a very different one. It's attached below here, and it gives you all of the component parts and shows you how that you can vary them. But let's just go through all of that. For those of you that are neophytes to chilaquiles, it's basically crispy tortillas that are put into a sauce and cooked a little bit or a lot, depending on what your preference is, and then uh, accompanied by some garnishes and uh, other things that go on. Let's just go through it a little bit by bit here. Okay, so let's talk about the tortillas first. And this is my cheat sheet, but I'm gonna include it all in the recipe that's attached here. The tortillas. We're going to start with the fact that this is a great place to use up leftover tortillas, cold tortillas, or even store-bought chips. Preferably from a local tortilleria, but pretty much anything will work. I've even made it with tostitos and it's been kind of okay. <laughs> Sauces. It can be any kind of sauce, but it typically will be a tomato-based sauce or a tomatillo-based sauce. Tomato-based sauce would, you would be ordering if you were in a restaurant, chilaquiles rojos, or the green sauce would be chilaquiles verdes. Now, I know that we have sort of stuck the category of chilaquiles in brunch dishes in the United States, but it's not that only in Mexico. It could be had any time of day. And whereas we always think it needs to be served with a fried egg on it, in Mexico it could be served with um, leftover meat that's pulled into coarse chunks. In fact, it's a perfect place to use up all kinds of leftovers. So this is a really good master recipe to have in your repertoire. Okay, the garnishes on it, most of the time in Mexico, when you say chilaquiles, everybody thinks crema first, some sort of luscious thick cream that gets spooned over the top. Usually that will be accompanied by some kind of a garnishing cheese, queso fresco, queso añejo. I prefer queso añejo because it gives a little bit more of a punch there. Um, and you will often, mostly always, I would say, find sliced onion on the top of it. That gives that fresh crunch. Um, you can vary it to many different things, but uh, onion seems to be in a thin slice seems to be most pe people's choices. So now when we talk about additions and garnishes to go on this simple, very homey, very satisfying, I call soul food kind of a dish, um, you could always throw in um, some greens. In fact, the name chilaquiles means chilies and greens. I don't know where the greens went, but it's not very common there, though I love them. So you could do blanched greens or some raw spinach that you chop up and put in there as the sauce is cooking. You could put some roasted vegetables in there. That would be absolutely delicious. You could put the chicken or uh, shredded coarse, coarse coarse shreds of cooked chicken or uh, beef or pork or whatever you happen to have on hand. Um, or you could take some chorizo sausage. I love it that way, but I don't usually mix that in. I sprinkle that on the top of it. Diced avocado is always welcome. If you've got uh, some green onions that we, you want to chop up and put on top in place of the sliced white onion, that would always be welcome as well. All of that said, I am going to finish with the basic proportions here because you basically need to know this, that if you're going to make four portions of chilaquiles, you need about four to four and a half cups of a brothy sauce. You need 12 tortillas that you're going to fry until they are crispy, and it doesn't matter how tender they are at all. Um, they could be the 12 tortillas, or you need eight ounces of chips for, that you've, you've purchased. Um, so you think about that sort of four to four and a half cups of brothy sauce to eight ounces of cooked tortilla chips, and you're kind of home free. After that, you can do anything that you want. Just remember that it's a brothy sauce, which leads me to my final thing. And I, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but it works really well. For a very fast meal, you have your eight ounces, which equals about eight cups of the tortilla chips. And then you have a 16 ounce jar of salsa, 
preferably a really good salsa and a couple cups of chicken broth. You just bring that salsa and chicken broth to a boil. There's your brothy sauce and you add the tortilla chips to it and cook it till it's as done as you like. And that's one that I go to a lot. And then play around with all the garnishes and the add-ins and all that sort of stuff. We're going to get started by making a classic salsa excuse me, as classic sauce here that is made with guajillo chilies and tomatoes. A little veering off of that path of tomato or tomatillo sauce. So it is something that will give you another perspective. I'm gonna take you through the steps of making that sauce now. Begin by tearing apart the dried guajillo chilies, removing the seeds and tearing the chilies into flat pieces. Now heat a very large skillet over medium and toast the chili pieces a few at a time, pressing them against the hot surface with a metal spatula. Collect the toasted chili pieces in a bowl, cover them with hot tap water. I like to weight them with a plate to keep them submerged and let them rehydrate for 20 to 30 minutes. Meanwhile, spread the tomatoes and the garlic on a rimmed baking sheet and roast them close up under a preheated broiler until the tomatoes are blackened and softening on one side. That'll take about six minutes. Then flip them and the garlic over and roast the other side. When it's all cooled down, pull the skins from the tomatoes and the skins off of the garlic. Drain the chilies and scoop them into the blender jar with the tomatoes and the garlic. Then blend that until it's smooth, then press all of it through a strainer into a bowl. Return the skillet to medium high heat and add the oil. When it's hot, add the puree all at once and cook, stirring it constantly for five to seven minutes until it's really thick. Then stir in the chicken broth and simmer for a few minutes to bring all those beautiful flavors together. Now, while the tomato guajillo chili sauce is simmering away, we'll move on to the tortillas. Now, this is a local brand here in Chicago, El Popocatepetl, and um, this is just a tortilla that would be what we call a table tortilla, which, as I've said in many other videos, does not fry up light and crisp like what you would expect out of a bag. Um, that means that they're going to be heavier and perfect, actually, for making chilaquiles. But in the vein of a tortilla chip, we're going to cut them into wedges. Now, that is not the only way you can do it. And in some of our restaurants, we will slice them into half inch pieces, strips, long pieces, and then fry them because they cook up super evenly that way. Um, but just sort of as a nod to tradition, um, I'm going to do these uh, with this triangular shape. I've got some oil heating over here and a handful at a time. I'm going to fry these. You'll notice that I don't really have my thermometer on here because this isn't an exact science at this point. If they come out a little tough or a little greasy, it doesn't even matter because of the next step, which is to put them into the broth. But still, I'm going to see if they sizzle sharply when I put an edge of it. I've got about a half a teaspoon or so of the... Of the oil in the pan and I'm using a heavy skillet here. This is my cast iron skillet because it works really well. I think the temperature is just about right and so uh, a handful of these at a time will go in and we will fry them until most of the bubbling stops. Okay the last batch of these guys is coming out now. Um, the sauce has simmered long enough for all the flavors to come together, but of course I have to salt it. So I'm going to put what I think is going to be about the right amount in there. Um, stir that around and then taste it. We've got one more flavor that's going to go in here, and that would either be cilantro or epazote. And I will tell you that everybody, especially in central Mexico, would say that chilaquiles aren't chilaquiles without a bunch of leaves of epazote. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so now I've got my epazote leaves here. Um, if you're using cilantro, you would just want to tear off the leaves and roughly chop them, which is kind of what I'm going to do with these epazote leaves. If you live near a Mexican grocery, the likelihood is that they will have this in the produce department. Um, and I'm just going to cut it about, cross in about half inch pieces. 
It's a strong herb, but boy, very much associated with chilaquiles. And sprinkle those guys over. And now we're ready to finish this chilaquiles here. Okay, so the chips are just gonna go in here. I'm gonna bring it to a good boil, the sauce to a good boil. Add the chips, and this is where you have to kind of feel your way through it. I say turn off the fire, put something over the top. I'm gonna to just use a, a baking sheet to go over the top of it because I don't have a, a lid for this 12 inch skillet. Um, and then I'm just gonna let them sit for anywhere from a minute and a half or so to five minutes, depending on whether you like a crunchier texture or a completely soft texture. That may all seem sort of like gibberish to you if you haven't had chilaquiles before, but in Mexico, there are places that serve it right out of the pan, just a boiling sauce, toss the chips with it, and then serve it to the guests. That to me is like warm salsa with chips, and it's not chilaquiles. So I like it about half soft, half crunchy. And then there are the people who like it to be completely soft, where uh, actually the sauce and the, the tortilla chips sort of meld into one thing, and that's what they serve as a filling for these amazing tortas in Mexico City. So we're about to a boil here. Um, I'm gonna just scrape all the chips in here. All of our seasonings are right. We got our epazote in there. Now, you'll notice I'm doing this in a 12-inch skillet. For, for four servings, I think that is really important because this is the hard step. You actually have to now get all of these chips doused with this sauce. If you have a smaller skillet, there's no way you'll be able to work them all around. So spend a, a minute just making sure that everything is coated with sauce. And then we'll sort of start the timer. And I'm gonna look at it after about two minutes and just see where we are with this. And for this version of the chilaquiles, I'm gonna add chicken to it and let that warm up with these chips and the sauce. And now the baking sheet goes over the top and I'm turning off the fire. Let's take a look at this now at two minutes. You can see that some of the chips are still have some integrity. Some of them have a very nice softness to them and then some I can still hear a little crispness to. So we'll stir all of that together like that. And then we'll go to, I, I probably would leave these in another 30 seconds or so, um, but I think that this will be delicious. Plus, by the time I get to tuck into this one, it'll have set for a little while longer. So we'll put our chilaquiles here. And then the wonderful garnish is, of course, the crema in a traditional thing. And of course, you could use a little bit of that, that strained yogurt, like Greek yogurt. I've done that a number of times. I think that's really good. Some of the onions. I'm gonna sprinkle over the queso añejo. This would be a great place if you don't have that for Parmesan or Romano cheese. And then what I like to do is just put a little bit more of the herb that I used, which is the epazote in this case, over the top of it. And there you have something that I think is just amazingly delicious, comforting soul food. This is what I always turn to, chilaquiles. Or if you wanna make green chilaquiles, and the recipe for the sauce is included here, and you just wanna buy chips to make it so that this whole thing goes even faster, I always recommend that you buy chips that are made from a local tortilleria. Uh, the ones that are kind of, I would call them taqueria style or restaurant style, they're gonna be thicker, and um, they'll have a little meatier texture to them. You need eight ounces. This was a 16 ounce bag, so 
so half of that. If you want to try to weigh them out at eight ounces, that's going to be the absolute best because this is all about proportion. Um, but you could also do a volume measure. It's about eight cups. So I'm going to put these into the boiling sauce. I've already seasoned this sauce and I have put cilantro in this one. Now the moment to try to get them all to nestle down into this sauce and get nicely coated. Then we'll put the top on, our baking sheet top on, and let them sit for two or three minutes and see how they are. Okay, time to check and see what we've got going here. I'm going to stir it. Uh, this is perfect to me. This is absolutely the perfect texture. Every chip will be slightly different. So you'll have to find either store-bought chips that you get to know or the ones that you fry. You'll figure out just how long to let them sit in the sauce to get the perfect texture for you. I fell in love with chilaquiles um, and this variety in particular with the roasted tomatillo salsa. Now we'll go over here to put some of the cream on here. We'll dollop that around. Again, this is food for a special occasion. <laughs> it's whatever is the, the thing that you want to celebrate in a given day that should be celebrated with chilaquiles. I'm going to put the queso añejo over the top. And then for this one, I'm going to put an egg on it because I know a lot of you think of eggs with chilaquiles. So I thought I would make this version, um, the brunchy version of it. I've got some cilantro here since cilantro was in my sauce. And I'll just sprinkle all that around. Chilaquiles number two. Chilaquiles verdes, brunch style with a sunny side up egg.